I'd love to, I, it feels very funny to be handing this job over to Linda because I've done it for the past whatever year and a half. But what I'd like to do is first of all, introduce Linda Kidd, who is willing to take over our studio tours, which I'm very excited about. And um, she is uh, always gonna be looking for people to share their studios like Frank Leonard's and Linda Dupas. Yes, you too. <laughs> She's going to snag you too. And um, so please, 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 if anyone's interested, her information is always in the newsletter and it's on the website. And so um, please get in touch with her. I know she's going to be looking for people. Um, and with that, I will close my mouth for a minute and turn it over to Linda. <laughs> So I feel like Huel Hauser because we're in this amazing property up here, which I hope we'll be able to have time to look at a little bit. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about your family and where you're from and that kind of thing. Uh, well, as you guys just heard, my mom and stepdad are on and uh, grew up in New Jersey mostly. And uh, how did you get to California? Uh, I was working for American Airlines and got transferred out to Los Angeles, but that was 35 years ago. I've been here for a long time, so uh, it's it's been a while. Did you paint back then? Nope, nope. My painting is definitely a midlife crisis. I started when I was about 40. Wow. And... Uh, just got addicted. It's, uh, it, as you all know, it gets in your blood and you can't stop. So that's kind of where I am now. Did you start, what medium do you paint in? Oil. Did you start in oil? Started in watercolor. David Dial. I will never go back. It's too hard. <laughs> it's so hard. I agree with you. Yes. There's no forgiveness. No, no. So what we could do is I could show you guys. Um, let me take you over here. Here, look. Okay. When I first started painting, I, you know, had zero background, and I, a friend of mine was painting with Phil Doyen, who a lot of you guys know. Oh, yeah. So um, I thought, okay, fine. I bought my little watercolors and got started. And my first watercolor, I was so proud of. She gave us the assignment to do a person lying on the couch in a very Matisse style with lots of color and stuff going on so I had my son lie on the couch at the time and I did my little painting and I brought it in and she made us hang them all up on the wall and critique them oh, and then I kind of realized where my level was compared to everybody else and she got to mine <laughs> and she said I love your primitive style and with that I thought okay that does it I'm getting myself into art school so I went over to the uh, California Art Institute over there on Hampshire and studied portraiture and figure painting. And uh, it took me forever. I, my people were green. I couldn't mix the colors. It was very frustrating, but luckily I kept at it. And uh, who were some of your teachers there? Oh boy, Michelle Dunaway, Tony Pro, uh, Glenn Orbick. Uh, gosh, there were tons of them, but, uh, and I became a workshop junkie, as you guys all know, I run the workshops at the Guild, and uh, it, uh, so I've taken a million workshops, and so now I've kind of learned that it's time to just paint, you can only paint like somebody else so much, and then you really want to find your own style, so this is where I am now, but I'm still doing workshops, so I'm going to find a fun one for January. How do you choose your subjects? Uh, as you can see, if you want to look around, I mostly like to paint figurative work. I like, I like people telling a story. So um, people or um, animals or uh, a little something happening that kind of tells a story. Oh, this one is a fun painting. It's one of my first ones that I ever did over at Moore Park College, I took a class. And they talked all about how you can have any color in the, as long as in you're shadow. staying in the right value. So mm -hmm. in the darks are all the dark 
and in the lights are all these different light colors and you can just speckle them all in there and you get a painting. So and I'm gonna back up so yeah, you can so see. On my dog. But you can, it's also interesting because you get, um, you kind of get an optical mixing. Yeah. When you back up, if you're in the same yeah. value, it just yeah. goes kind of gray and neutral. It shows you why it's so important to have your values correct. So, um, so you kind of combined your landscape and people into some of these. Well, you know, I think what I learned is I loved painting people since that was my background at the California Art Institute. But then I learned that I had to put my people into a background. So I kind of had to learn how to do landscapes. So uh, I still struggle with them. It's, uh, it's not as exciting for me to do a, a landscape scene, but as long as I can put a farmer or a tractor or at least a barn or something in there, it, uh, it's a little more exciting for me. So this is a fabulous easel. What, where did you this, get this made? Or? Uh, I finally bought to have something more permanent. Um, it's, it's wonderful. You can bring it down, push it up. You can stand, you can sit, you can, uh, it rolls all around so I can change the position. Then this thing I absolutely love. Thank it's you, Yolanda McAlevey. It's, uh, yes, I turned the top into a great big palette so I can use big brushes and lots of paint. And, and is then- Is that stone or? No, it's like a plexiglass. Uh-huh. And then um, I keep all my different That's paints fabulous. in all the different drawers. Top one is uh, water soluble oils. Next one are regular oils. And then I get down into my acrylics if I can, which I don't have many of because I don't paint in acrylic. And then the bottom section is turp and oils and junk. So, um, so this is Kennedy. Where did you get this? Uh, online, online. They're a little bit expensive. But uh, I love having the top and it also rolls around and you can put it anywhere in the studio in, in front of the uh, easel or the side or whatever works the best. I have to show them the volume in this place. Well, I'm gonna yeah. look in the, I'm gonna go up to the ceiling here. So this, I, I'm probably right in getting backlit, right? Well, if you guys can see also, I've got both my dogs lying right in the way, which, it's so nice to finally be in a studio that they can be with me because my last studio was upstairs and this one is too old to be able to go up and down the stairs so she could never come up. So now she's happy because she can come in and lie on the cool floor and um, <laughs> get to be in here. So this is, this studio is set in the middle of the San, Santa Rosa Valley Hill. So they're looking all over Moore Park and Somas and then the other side looking all over toward the beach. Well, we, oh, so we can just take them outside and okay. give them a quick tour. But let me show you what we do is, this is a really handy thing to have. I have this little fridge in here. And what I do is I keep my paint on a palette. Oh, cool. And so when I'm finished, instead of throwing all this paint away, I stick it in the little freezer and leave it in there. So the next time I'm ready, cold That's beer great. down below, a bottle of wine, no. <laughs> um, it's nice. I've got all this is art storage um, instead of kitchen stuff, obviously. And one really cool thing I want to show you is my little bathroom. Um, this is all my family stuff. My father made this beautiful picture. Oh my gosh. My great grandmother uh, had this beautiful old, it was a ice box that was used back in the old day. They filled it with ice and uh, it shows the water level down on the bottom where the hurricane came up in Cape Cod, which is where this piece was. And so I thought about refinishing it and somebody said, no, no you can't, you no. gotta keep the history on there. Oh, that's gorgeous. And this is my grandmother's photograph, which, uh, she took back in like the 40s or something. And um, she also made this cool mirror and stenciled the top and painted the whole thing. Oh so gosh. I had artists in my family, which uh, was pretty fun. I wish I figured it out sooner. What I have up above up here, we built this, uh, these storage uh, 
whatever they're called units, just to store big stuff, big frames, extra, I have an easel up there, some extra stuff, my big rolls of canvas, uh, things that I don't use all the time, but just have someplace to stuff. How high is the ceiling? Gosh, you know, I don't feet? even know. I, I probably. Yeah. But I don't know if a lot of you know, after I finished my studio, which I was so excited to finally be done, and the inspector came in to do the final inspection. And he looked around, he picked a couple tiny things, fuse boxes that needed a different fuse, little things. And then he glances up at the ceiling and he said, where are your fire sprinklers? <sighs> Oh. So needless to say, we have a little demolition to do. So I think they're going to pop the sprinklers in along the side of the beam and put something up there just so I can finally be permitted. So in the meantime, I'm in no rush to start all over again, but uh, hopefully it won't be that big of a big of a demolition. And is that a heating unit on the wall? It's air and heating. So it can be, it's pretty temperate in here all the time. Um, and I've got a big fan. So I like to open everything up. And um, that's kind of why I don't paint in oils so much anymore, just the water soluble oils, because I don't like dealing with the fumes and the stench and the mess and the cleanup. And, it, to me, it's a little bit scary. So water solubles, I love. And uh, do you find any difference between that and the others in terms of saturation or? No, I find that as long as you use the medium that comes with it, you can make it just as juicy and yummy as regular oils. So uh, it's a it's good balance between the right amount and making it too soupy. So, uh, but it's, I definitely feel like it's the way to go. Then what I did was I put, I have this fabulous massage chair that's been beat up. It gets lots of use. And so what I'll do is I sit in my chair, I can look at my pain from across the room, I can turn it on, I can get a little massage. And that way, when you look at your artwork from a distance, you all of a sudden go, oh, oh my gosh, how did I not see that yes. um, sooner? And the other thing I did, which was I have my paintings here. So while I'm working on it, Linda, if you can show them, inside this cabinet, I put, as long as you don't trip on dogs, this giant mirror. Very good. So that way, while I'm painting, I can look back and go, oh, something's wrong and for whatever reason you see it in reverse much easier than you see it um it's kind of like turning on. it upside down upside down yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that i found really helps but all this stuff is so fun because you know when you make your own studio you get to really put exactly what i need what um you know, it's the only thing I must say, which I panicked a little bit, because I put in these beautiful skylights for all this natural light. And uh, I started to paint the first day. And then all of a sudden I realized in my glass palette, I could see all three skylights reflecting into my palette, which was a bit of a nightmare. So I uh, quickly put in, instead of glass, I did this plexiglass. So now mm -hmm. it's dull. Uh -huh. And uh, and then what I do is if I'm out, I'm not usually out here morning, early in the morning, which is when I have the problem, but then I can just turn my camp, my easel a little bit and everything. And then in the afternoon, I can paint all day. Because you get glare? I was getting a little bit of sun coming through. Like right now, the sun wouldn't even have been a problem because it's, it's changing towards the winter. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the summertime, it was coming up right here, but it was early, early, early. And I'm not really that early of a riser. So uh, it wasn't a problem. So do you have any particular goals for your art? I think the one thing I need to work on is, as some of you know, if you're, you're on, um, I hate plein air painting. I just cannot seem to love it. And I keep trying and all the workshops, a lot of them that I do are plein air painting. Um, I find it so nice in the studio with your music playing, the dogs, it's controlled lighting, it's nice, the sun's not moving across the sky, and bugs and wind and glare, and, but it's kind of a goal that I'd like to, 
uh, because it's so nice to be out in the open with friends and other painters and enjoying a nice day. And so I wish I liked it. So maybe that's my goal for the future. Oh, interesting. So how would you describe your style? Oh, you know, it started pretty tight, I think, because we all want to be able to prove that we can draw. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then once you get tight paintings, you get tired of them. And then you all of a sudden want to start loosening it up and try to find more abstract elements and um, try to make it more painterly. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where I'm stuck now. I'm, I'm, I have a tendency to find a painting, pull it off the wall, take it out of the frame, and now I want to mess it up a little bit. So uh -huh. sometimes I say rats, I wish I hadn't done that, but uh, sometimes it's like, oh, well, that was kind of fun. So, Sounds like a good place to be stuck. So it's good. It's a little more time of experimentation, I think. And I know you've won awards. Where do you show besides the Guild and what award uh, do you win? Mostly the the Westland Village Art Guild, but also, I mean, the Santa Paula Art Museum has shows I enter all the time. Um, I had a show in Los Angeles uh, years ago that had about 40 paintings in it. Oh, how fun. Uh, that was hard. Um, but, you know, I've been kind of busy with the Guild lately, so I, uh, I, I need to get better also getting my work out there because it is starting to take over, so something I need to do. But uh, other than that, I'm trying to think if there's uh, anything else that for you, anybody who's thinking about making a studio. Um, How big is this? Um, 470 maybe, I think it was, square feet. It's so nice because you can really get back from your painting and see it yeah a lot of pro that's a problem for a lot of us who have a smaller space you can't get away from it yeah you can't get far yeah. enough back to really see it um another thing i love about my studio is the acoustics in here are phenomenal so i have my guitar and i can come out here and play my guitar and sing at the top of my lungs and i have nobody oh. teaching me or telling me i'm off key so um it, I saw the music, but I didn't realize, I didn't see the guitar. Yeah, I so it's, it's just, this is totally a happy place. And uh, um, here, we could probably come back over here. To, to show the oh. view. Or to, the oh, yeah, let's side. go outside real quick. Yeah. Oops. Um, careful where you're walking. I do have a step here. Okay. So this is our grapevine is growing along the wall, which hopefully will take over one of these days. So you have 20 acres of lemons? Lemons. Lemons. So you can plein air paint right here, Wendy. We do. I do yeah. have friends that come over every now and then and we paint together. Anyway. So I'd love to one of these days have a big party out here and have some wine and appetizers. And once we can get together and, and party a little more, it would be wonderful to uh, break this in or come out and paint with me. It's, uh, I've got room to set up a few more easels and um, be always nice to have a group that paints and the camaraderie of painters is always wonderful, so. Well, Wendy, can we bring a couple of painters out from TOAA? It'd be fun anytime. Oh, thank you. We'll let you know. I'd love to. Yeah, that would be fun. We've done workshops here. When Richard Robinson came from New Zealand. Oh, yes, he's great. A three-day workshop here, which was really fun. So yeah, um, love to get you guys out here. But right. you know, just as a reminder, it's I. So blessed and so I'm so thankful I've got this fabulous space. I mean, I've never asked for anything in my entire life. And this is the first thing that I've ever thought I would really like to have. So but you need this. You paint at your dining room table anywhere you have space. So I mean this is where you do it. If you definitely feel free to um uh share with your space because it's just as important to see uh where you guys paint and to hear a little bit about you and so yeah. i'm hoping nobody feels afraid yeah. of 
intimidated or anything that I don't have a cool studio. Uh, you guys remember I shared my little bedroom studio that I painted in for 20 years with my king size. So please, you know, feel comfortable sharing your things. Thank you for that. Yeah, definitely. When uh, Wendy, uh, this is Diana Ball. Um, hi. hi. Um, I've struggled with the water mixable oils. Uh, can you? And they feel more uh, pasty as opposed to buttery, like oil, regular oils. Um, can you tell me what brand you use and uh, especially what um, mediums you use? Uh, let me grab it. It's all right here. It's at Harbison. Uh, it's, uh... Okay, they're the Windsor Newton. Can you see? It just says Windsor Newton water solubles. Uh huh. Bullets, they call them. And then you buy the Windsor Newton water mixable oil uh, that goes with it. Okay. And I find that if you use, you know, pretty much I paint, I don't use really any water to paint with them. I just paint oh. straight up a lot of times to get started. Maybe I thin it down a little bit. And then once I get started, then I start mixing in the oil. Um, and it does make it nice and creamy. It's, uh, um, I, I've gotten used to it. So I, I, in the beginning, I was sure I was not gonna like it, but I, I like it for the health reasons. And now I've really gotten used to it for, it works. Well, um, what kind of oil do you use? What kind, you mean the, the medium? Yeah. Um, uh, it's called Windsor Newton Artesian Water Mixable Oil. Oh. Hmm. And, and it doesn't have a chemical or oil, oil smell? Nothing. It's wonderful. And the great thing about it is when you're done painting, it's in the sink, a little water and a little soap, and you're done. You don't have to schlep turp and then clean your brush because of oh. all the Oh, fabulous. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I don't know if it's correct or not. Linda just asked, do I have to use a different kind of brush for it? I just use my same oil painting brushes. So uh, that doesn't change. Um, do many of you, have any of you tried water mixables? Yes, yeah. I have. Yeah. Okay. I, the, only, the time I learned about them was painting with Dennis Perrin when he came here to do a workshop and he had uh, a whole palette of paint left over after his demo and he was asking anybody if they wanted his paint and I said well I would love to try them so I bitched and moaned because like probably Diane you were just saying I couldn't get the right consistency and he said for medium medium get more oil going and as soon as I got it nice and yummy, <laughs> started, uh, I could work it better. And uh, it, I, I thought, okay. And he had fabulous brushes. So there was something about the, his brushes and oh. which Italy went to rosemary brushes oh and bought and his parents set. Yeah. And now I've got his paint, his oil, his brushes, his everything. So. And can you use the same varnish? Yes, yes. Yep. So um, I highly recommend them. Wendy, what uh, what base uh, substrate do you paint on? Always canvases, or do you use like any wood backgrounds, or just mostly canvas? You know, I use the Raymar panels a lot, um, and I use um, I bought I have big rolls of canvas, so sometimes I just cut them and paint on them, and depending on if I like it or not, I stretch it and put it on stretcher bars, but. Uh, you know, a lot of times I'm just messing around and uh, I hate using a really nice expensive piece of something and then realize this was a piece of junk and so. But you put your canvas on to paint when, when it's not on a board. I, I tape it to a board. And, uh, and then the nice thing about that is you can change the frame size. If you decide you only like this little section oh. of the 
you can cut it and glue it onto another board and frame it to that mm. size. You're not Great idea. Yeah. You know, eleven by fourteen. You can. Yeah. You can change right. it. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, anyway, are there any more questions? Yeah, Wendy. Uh, what is your color palette? What? I, you know, I try to paint with a pretty limited palette. Um, I, I started painting with the Zorn palette, which are those three colors, ochre and uh, cad red and black and white. And, and from those, you can mix an entire array of um, colors. And since then, I've added a few more. I, I have uh, cad yellow. I added alizarin. Um, I even threw some orange in there because I, I like to brighten some things up. Uh, and, and ultramarine blue, and that's about it. So there is a question in chat from David. Does the window face north? Yes. Okay. This window. <laughs> yeah. This window is north, and well, it's and this one is north, northwest. And north, maybe. So uh, yes, because my last studio, I had the windows in the two absolute wrong sides, you know, east and south or something. And it was a nightmare. I had to keep shades on them. It was dark like a cave in there all the time because I was always dealing with light in my eyes, glare from somewhere. And so that was the one thing we did decide when we built this is how to position it that it was the light wouldn't be coming through the windows. What so. kind of light bulbs do you have? Uh, they're whatever the... Are they full spectrum? Yeah, and they're, um, what are they called? LED? Yes, thank you. <laughs> so anyway. Um, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful studio. Do thanks. you find you're painting more now? I know you always painted a lot before. Well, I'm not painting as much as I would like to. Um, I need, you know, I found during the pandemic that a lot of us, I, I don't know about, I, sh I shouldn't say a lot of us, I got into a bit of a funk and uh, I'm the kind of painter that my house has to be clean, my errands have to be taken care of, I don't need to be doing anything and I can go in my studio, turn on my music and just paint and not have a kind of a care in the world. And I find that, the pandemic was not putting me in the right headspace. And so finally, my husband, thank goodness he knows me so well, said, why don't you do one of those 30 day challenges and just get started? And so I did, and I just decided to paint and every day I painted. And of course, once you get into it, then you remember why you love it so much. And I started looking forward to getting into my studio and go paint and, and, um, but lately we've been a little busy with guild stuff and trying to get these dinner demos going. And, yes. <laughs> and my son's getting married in two weeks. And and, oh. ah! <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's, it's, I think after the wedding, I can probably, but that's of course when they'll probably start breaking walls to put in my sprinkler. So. <laughs> I need to go plein air painting with David Dial and just uh, get get going on my future goals. Well, you're so, always welcome to come with us, Wendy. And with you, yes, Barb. I am planning to coming with you again once my life settles down after the Absolutely. wedding. Absolutely, you're welcome always. Definitely. What, what kind of music do you listen to when you paint? Ooh, you know, I wish I could say uh, classical and Bach, and, but no, it, it's rock and roll from probably the 70s or something that I know all the words still and can sing along and boogie a little bit while I paint, so. <laughs> Have you tried ABBA? I love ABBA. ABBA, ABBA works good with painting. Oh, good. I might try that. I will. I'll, I'll get more. It's a lot of my playlists are things that my kids uh, programmed for me when I was technically challenged. And uh, I'm due for adding some new music. So good idea, David. Thanks. Your kids. 
As an architect, I'm very impressed with your layout. Uh, one thing I want to tell you, which you probably know already, but there are remote control curtains, blinds, and louvers that you can install. And you can push buttons and get rid of the sun if it bothers you in the future. Thank you. Yes, I do need to do that. It's um, especially because out this window, which is never sun except for about five o'clock in the afternoon as the sun is setting, it drops right into my eyes. So if I'm ever here working on my computer, it's this thing here that's so Wendy, I did. You've got this all wrong. Five o'clock is wine time. Oh. Get away from your computer. <laughs> no wonder the sun is right there telling me I need <laughs> That's your reminder. <laughs> oh, good thinking, Dennis. So um, anyway, yes, I do need that. And I even thought about on my skylights uh, having something that I could maybe, but for the most part, the sun isn't really a problem. So um and I normally never have my lights on in here, except that today is such a dark gray day that we figured we'd better light it up in here. But normally I've got all this wonderful natural light. And I love these shelves instead of trying to hang something on the walls and changing around all the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. So, well, you guys, thank you so much for thank coming. You. Thank, thank you for thank sharing. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us in. And, and please, please, please contact Linda because I'd love to have her continue these, which will be really a lot of fun. And um, Susan Vogel will be doing her studio next month. So um, that's November 12th. So definitely pop in for that one. And for those of you, the dinner demo is on uh, November 2nd. Yeah. I'm so excited to get that back together. We will have a vaccination requirements, or if you haven't been vaccinated, you have to have a negative test within 72 hours before the dinner demo. Uh, masks will be worn, except for while we're eating. Um, they're gonna space tables a little bit more, less people at each table, and they are gonna serve the food, so there's not gonna be anybody touching all the different buffet things. So it will be safe, we will make it a fun thing, it'll be wonderful to get back together. So I really hope you all come. And as you guys know, Annette Power is, Phenomenal. So I'm really looking forward to it. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. And Thank I you, hope Wendy. you see you on November 2nd. One, two, one, two, three, four.